So you love your saxophone sound in the middle of your range, but the bottom sounds not right and the top sounds thin. How do you fix that? How do you get an even sound over your whole saxophone? In this lesson, I'm going to talk about that and give you a good little exercise that's going to help you to get a really great even sound over your whole range. <laughs> We're all looking for that perfect sound where we can go up and down and feel comfortable all the way around. It's easy to do, but most of us miss it because we don't practice it the right way. And I want to share a little tip with you today that will help you with that and hopefully make that process easier for you. I've got a uh, list of warm-up exercises I've, I've created called Nigel's 20 Killer Warm-Up Exercises, but there's some really good stuff in there. I'll put a link down below, and it's a free download from my website, but there's exercises in there that are really going to help you, and we're going to use one of those exercises today. Now, just before we get started, if it's your first time here, please do subscribe to my channel because I'm making new stuff all the time, and I don't want you to miss out on any of these lessons because I think they're really going to help you to improve with your saxophone playing. And also, uh, I'm if you've not heard of me before, so I run Sax School, which is a, a vast online repository of saxophone lessons. We've got, that doesn't sound very nice, does it? But we've got like 600 odd lessons in there now, loads and loads of courses too. And these are lessons that thousands of people are using every single day to improve their skills. So they cover everything from getting started to learning about improvising the blues, learning how to uh, play some great jazz standards and killer pop songs and pop, uh, original pop solos as well. All things that will help you to develop your skills. That's over at mcgillmusic.com. You can get a 30 day trial at the moment might still be running when you're watching this video, but there's a link below this video. Okay, so this exercise, now I'm going to keep it really simple. It's more about the concept. What we're going to do is we're going to start in the middle of our range, because just about all of us are comfortable in the middle of our range on saxophone. I'm talking about notes around C, so maybe from G without the octave key, up to C and even D and E with the octave key on. Those notes all feel comfortable uh, for us, for just about all of us as saxophone players, and we can get a lovely sound in that range. So that's our safe zone. So what we need to do is work from there, gradually extending our safe zone down to the bottom of our range and up to the top of our range. So an easy way to do that is to pick a scale. I'm going to use a C major scale, but you could use a, you know, B flat mixolydian or a diminished scale or, or a minor scale, a harmonic minor, any, any scale that you want really. Um, but for the purpose of this exercise, I use a major scale. So I'm going to start on the C uh, major scale. I'm going to start on my middle C on the tonic, the first note. And I'm just going to get the loveliest sound I can on that C. And then I'm going to go down to B and then back up to C. <laughs> now, if you want an extra level of um, complexity in here, you can use your tuner. I've got my tuner on my iPad here, you can have your tuner on your music stand so that you can follow and watch your intonation. I'm also thinking about what's happening here. I'm having a nice round embouchure. My back is straight, I'm breathing well, my shoulders are relaxed, and my throat's open, and I'm trying to get a lovely big warm sound. When I'm comfortable with the B, then I move down to the A, and then down to the G, and down to the F, until I reach that point where it's, I, I can find that it's starting to get a little bit you know, the sound isn't where I want it to be. You get the idea. So what we're doing is we're moving down in steps each time. And it's easy to think, that's boring, Nigel. It's far too easy and it's not going to help me. But you know what? There's actually a secret in this exercise that most people miss. And that is the transition from one note to the next note. That's the reason why we're doing it. I know you know your C major scale, but that transition from one note to the next, that's the clincher. That's the point where we most often fail when we're playing through a piece of music and we go for a note and we miss it. And it's because we're adjusting our embouchure or we're not used to the way we adjust our embouchure. So as you get out of your safe zone and you start to get down to difficult notes like C down to low E, C down to low D or C or B, um, then a lot more is going to be happening here. And what I want you to do is to make that transition from the C down to that difficult note really slow. And I want you to think about keeping your sound as, con as consistent as possible. 
So I'm not tonguing that low note, I'm just keeping my air going. I'm trying to keep my embouchure as consistent as possible. <laughs> Now eventually, it may take a little while of working on this, you'll be able to get that bottom register to be just as lovely and fat and in tune as your middle register. Can you see how that system works? Now of course it works in the other direction exactly the same way, so starting in the middle C and working up, yeah it's easy for D and E and F possibly, but then C to G, that's a bit more tricky. What about C to A, C to B, what about C to high D? So when you're doing those exercises, is the sound still even? Is it starting to get wobbly? You know, you want to keep it dead straight with your tone. And don't forget you can take this all the way up to high F. Okay, so that's the exercise. You know, it's not about the difficulty of the fingering, it's about how much you focus in on it in order to get the most out of this exercise. You really need to be thinking about your embouchure, what's going on here with your, your jaw, with your throat, with your lips, your breathing your intonation, and then the quality of your sound. Go ahead and download that 20 killer warm-up exercise that I've written out for you. There's a bunch of stuff in there that I know is going to help you. And let me know in a comment if you do these sort of exercises already, or which one of those 20 killer warm-ups you find works the best for you. I'd really love to hear from you about that. I can't tell you how important these exercises are. These are the things that I use all the time. Talk to any pro player and they'll be using exercises like this. So please, please, please incorporate them into your practice as well. And if you really want to move ahead, go and check out SAC School. You can get a 30-day trial at the moment. Hopefully it's still running when you're watching this video. But I really want you to, to try these lessons out because I know they'll help you. And that's why the trial is free. So you can go in, try all of the lessons in the library, and learn some stuff, have some fun, see if it's a good fit for you, and hopefully you'll stick around and become part of our massive community of saxophone learners. So keep practicing hard, and I'll see you next time.